welcome. In this video, we are checking out the 2017 Subaru BRZ Limited, and this is, of course, the manual transmission. Now, they have made some significant changes for the 2017 model year. Uh, most of those apply as far as the engine just to the manual transmission version, but some to both. There is now uh, more chassis reinforcement, so a bit more rigid chassis. You've got suspension tweaks. They have upped the size of the rear anti-roll bar. And you also have a new spoiler there on the back, uh, which will add a little bit more downforce than the previous version. Now, as far as the engine, this is where a lot of the major changes came in. So they've revised the cylinder heads, the valves, the uh, camshafts. They've also changed out the plastic intake manifold for an aluminum intake manifold, uh, which I like to see because pretty much everyone's going plastic these days. And it's cool to see that they've switched back to aluminum for the intake manifold. So, you know, a revised intake. They've also revised the exhaust manifold. And so all of these, you know, minute engine changes have added to uh, about five extra horsepower and five extra torque. So 205 horsepower, 156 pound feet. Now, once again, this is only for the manual transmission uh, that sees these engine benefits. So, you know, they're further separating the performance difference between the two cars. And, you know, the manual honestly was the better performer already before these changes. Uh, and another difference, you know, I got in this car and I started driving it and I thought you know it feels a little quicker than the previous version what's the deal with that it can't be that I'm possibly feeling you know just five extra torque uh, that's that's a very different you know very small change to be able to feel it wasn't that which I was feeling it was the rear differential change they've changed the final drive from a 4.1 to a 4.30 uh, and that's gonna give you a bit more wheel torque and I love that. I love aggressive gearing. I'll take as aggressive gearing as a manufacturer is willing to put in. Um, so I love the fact that they, you know, up the final drive ratio, gives you a little bit more wheel torque. So combined with that and the additional torque from the engine, uh, it certainly is a little bit quicker of a car. Now, once again, this is only for the manual transmission. If you opt for the automatic box, which you shouldn't do, uh, you're going to be getting the 4.1 differential and you're going to be getting the engine without that uh, additional benefits that they've upgraded uh, and the five additional horsepower. And all these people biking up a hill, that's just tiring. You could have a boxer engine do it for you. Low CG, have fun around the corners, not be out of breath. One of the other really cool things about the fact that they went from a 4.1 to a 4.3 uh, to me is that it proves that an engineer won a discussion out there rather than the marketing team. Because I believe what would have happened is the marketing team would have seen the 4.3 change. They know that in their previous BRZ, the 4.1, let it hit 60 miles per hour in second gear. So it gave you a nice uh, zero to 60 time because you could hit it in second gear and you didn't have two gear shifts. Well, changing to the 4.3, you'll top out at about 56, 57 miles an hour in second gear. And so you won't be able to get that, you know, better zero to 60 time, but this thing will accelerate quicker uh, to 50 for sure. And it will definitely accelerate quicker to 70. Um, you know, it's just that one small area, which everyone focuses on is that zero to 60 time, uh, which it may be a slightly worse on just because you've got another gear shift in there, even though it has more torque at the wheels, uh, you've got that additional gear shift and you have to compensate for that time. And, you know, engineers, Years, they're not going to care about it. Zero to 60, whatever. It's not that meaningful. You can you can change gearing and, and get a more fun car to drive. And that's what they've done. Marketing sees this as, you know, that's what people read. People read the zero to 60 times out there. And so I think that's cool that they've actually switched to the 4.30. I don't know if it's actually quicker or not to 60. My guess is that it would probably do better to just have it top off in second gear. Either way, I love it. Aggressive gearing is the way to go. It's what makes cars fun to drive like this. Um, and it gets them a little tail happy. Another change they've made is they've added a track mode instead of sport mode. And you know, that raises the threshold on the stability control. So it gets you a little bit more sideways before it kicks in and starts saying, hey, you're gonna kill yourself. Uh, so it's exciting that they've added that change. And of course you can turn everything off, off if you would like to, uh, not worry about the traction aids and just get completely sideways and you know, at your own peril. <laughs> Track mode definitely lets you spin the tires. <laughs> so let's talk about what it's like to drive. Up front, you've got the boxer engine with a low center of gravity. This is a really well balanced car. And you know, it's got a pretty stiff suspension, all things considered. So what this results in is something that's, you know, extremely uh, playful and very responsive. 
The steering is really sharp. You've got a uh, pretty tight ratio on it, so turn in is very quick. Not too much weight to it, uh, but it definitely has you know enough weight that you can feel it pretty well. And you know the response is what makes it so nice. And you actually do get some feedback through it um, compared to some of the other vehicles out there for sure. So I really do like the steering in this. The throttle response is really good as well, which is something that with electronic throttles you don't always get these days, but you know you put your foot down and you definitely get the power very immediately, so that's nice. Not too much rev hang when you do shift gears, uh, which is unusual for Subaru. A lot of them, you know, a lot of the models, my Crosstrek, for example, the WRX for sure, has quite a bit of rev hang. This tends to drop the revs a little bit quicker when you do shift gears, so you know that's nicer for quicker shifting, which is obviously desired in these quicker cars. Uh, which are meant for more spirited driving. The brake pedal doesn't have too much travel to it, really firm, um, nice progressive build as you press into it. Definitely good strong brakes, so I do like that. And finally, there's the shifting, and it's pretty much the classic story with Subaru, where you've got, you know, the classic notchy feel that they have, um, you know, it's secure, it feels good, it's not the smoothest shifter out there by any means, um, but you know, plenty of control with the clutch and nothing really major to complain about. I do like the shifting in this much better uh, than some of the other Subaru models where you have that rev hang and it's not smooth as a result. Pretty nice. Track mode is a nice add. It definitely lets you chirp around a bit with the rear end. Uh, doesn't let you get too crazy, but allows you to have some fun with it. And this kind of road, it's what this car was made for. You've also got a new power gauge that they show uh, in the front to the right of the speedometer and the tachometer which actually shows you that dip of torque which you have between about 3,000 and 5,000. You really want to keep this engine above 5,000 if you want peak torque available all the time, keep it in the sweet spot. Uh, but with that 4.3 rear differential, it definitely helps you stay there. Shift light blinking on there when we're getting about 7,000 RPM. Red line at 7,400. I really don't have many complaints. I mean, it's a fun car. It's a fun, solid car. Uh, visibility, looking out, you know, to your blind spot is pretty poor. Uh, other than that, you know, I mean, some people might complain the interior is a little dated, uh, but they have updated the screen here, so you've got a nice, decent touch screen. Uh, the audio system's nothing to brag about for sure, but uh, when you're buying these kind of cars, you're more looking forward to the audio system of the engine, and it has a nice tone to it, so I've quite enjoyed driving it. So the question everyone always asks and you know everyone claims, does the BRZ need more power? And really I think it comes down to you have to choose two out of three things. You can have affordability, you can have lightweight, and you can have high power. You can only pick two of those. You can have an affordable lightweight car like this or an MX-5. You can have an affordable high powered car, uh, but it's gonna be heavy, it's not gonna be lightweight. In order to get the cost down, you have to use cheaper materials and cheaper materials end up being heavier. It's expensive to build lightweight cars. And so really, if you wanted this car to have more power, let's say they throw a turbocharger on it, well then they've gotta up the drive shafts, they've gotta up the differential, they've gotta up the rear axles, they've got to change the rear tire make those wider you know there's a lot of changes that have to be made in order for it to be safe and reliable with more power and so every time you add power you have to add all this weight to it so you really have to choose you know do you want a lightweight fun sports car or do you want something high powered uh, you know that everyone would enjoy and I think that's kind of the beauty about this car is that it isn't built for everyone you know not everyone's gonna like this car uh, and that's a good thing we don't need more cars that everyone will like we need cars that have their very specific niche that you know certain people uh, will enjoy driving. And if you enjoy driving cars, you will have fun in this thing because it's lightweight, it's so responsive, and it's just a really sharp, predictable machine around these tight corners. And that's what makes it so fun. And I think adding power would add weight, and consequently it would take away uh, the joy of this car and what's so great about it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Thank you all, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.